Okay, my pegs came in and this was a long process. I was looking at replacing the pegs on this motorcycle before I even purchased it. And I mean before the dealership even had the bike, before I um, actually started reviewing it, I knew the pegs would have to be replaced. And I researched a lot of uh, peg companies, manufacturing companies. I think two of them, at least two of them were in the United States. And I called different companies with questions and I was very impressed with Vanash Motorsports. Actually talked to the owner, founder, Andrew Vanash, and uh, I also watched a video that Dork in the Road did on, on Vanash's products, putting them on his Norden. And he's an awesome guy to talk to and very service oriented. I told him I wanted to order his, his foot pegs. We talked about them a little bit. And I said, but I need to have them tomorrow. I'm paying for expedite shipping. Will I get them next day? And he said, if you order it quickly, I can get it on today's shipment. And this was early afternoon. And I ordered them quickly and, and sent him a message that I had ordered. It. And he said, it just was enough money to get it on or one, one next day delivery overnight. So we shipped it and I couldn't thank him enough. So let's take a look. Let's open the box. Wait for it. Officer Bob. Thank you. I think that's so cool. He's all, I think he's Utah, Oregon. I think he's in Oregon. That, do I think? Does it have a return address on this? Oregon. Albany, Oregon. Ooh, night. What is this? What, what are these little freebies he sends? Multifunctional headwear. We got to try that on. Stickers. Love the stickers. Oh, he knows. He's getting... He's going to get more orders from me. Nice. Very nice. Oh, I got to open up this headgear. Let's look. Wait till you see these foot pegs. Oh, man. You got to look at this. I'll put in the sunlight. They're huge. They're huge. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. So I did not get the dowel pegs because I always wear a heavy riding boot, not an enduro boot or adventure boot, but at least a heavy sold motorcycle boot. I don't wear flip flops on a motorcycle or um, or top siders. So I was going to get the blue. So he sends you two sets of screws, a shorter screw and a taller screw, depending on how much bite you want. I think I'm probably going to put in the shorter screws for now. And there's four, I think four choices in colors. And I was going to go with blue, but the bike, the lower portion of this bike does not have the blue on it. Everything's black and aluminum finish. And I decided, nope, I, I've done well with going with black and gray on the bike. And I decided to go with black and a metal finish, which is the colors on the bottom of the bike. And uh, these are premium. <laughs> these are, they're huge. I love it. Oh my gosh. These are awesome. So he sends, I didn't think they sent you the springs. He sends you the springs. I thought you had to reuse the springs, but he's sending you the springs to put in the return spring. He's sending you an Allen wrench. And I see the cotter pins. They promise you have to retain this pin that holds it in place with, with a cotter pin, or you reuse the existing pin on the bike. And uh, they send you a replacement cotter pin. You can see it in the bag right there. 
all the screws to put in it, two sets, a shorter screw and a taller screw, the Allen wrench to put the screws in, and two of these premium, oh my gosh, I love it, premium wide foot pegs. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Exceeded my expectations. All right, uh, you know what? I did not get a, any discount on these because of my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not getting anything out of promoting his foot pegs on my channel. I paid for these, obviously. But what I am getting is satisfaction to helping someone who was very courteous on the phone with an old man who had a lot of nervous questions about his gear. And he was very patient. And he said he was going to do something, and he did it. And that's impressive. So, Andrew, thank you. And uh, I can't wait to put these on the bike. And you're going to see it on the channel. So we'll get to putting these on the motorcycle. Thanks, Marauders. Oh, don't go away. We're going to put them on the bike. I've never done foot pegs before. And um, we'll see how that goes. I also have to adjust the, the brake levers to get them at the right height and also the shift lever when I do this. I've never adjusted those on any bike. Well, at least not in the last 40 years. I haven't done it. These are premium. Premium. Is that beautiful? Okay, I'm excited. Let's get to work. So let's take a look at my foot on the stock peg, just to give you an idea, and you know this, it's, it's not too small. You can see that, well, I hope you can see, my foot is, even my foot is not, my tight foot is tight up against the engine, and there's a gap Got a one inch, one inch of my foot is hanging off the peg and my boot is tight against the, the engine, engine case. So that should come through in the video. And then as I pointed out in my previous video, you can see how tight the, the seat is in the high position. You can see the angle is tight on my, on my leg because those pegs are so high. I don't know why they may put them up so high. I'm not going to judge engineers with Husqvarna. Um, you know, they sell, they sell aftermarket products to make these bikes fit all of us. You know, to help make them fit all of us, to customize them for our different bodies. So I wanted to give you a look at that. Next, this peg is three quarters of an inch lower than the stock peg. So I like the layout the height of both the shifter lever, I might wish that was up a little higher, the shifter level lever and the brake lever. So I want to maintain that relationship between these two. So the only way I can think of is to measure the distance off the floor. This peg is the top of this peg. 17 and a quarter inches high, 16, 16 and an eighth inches high. If this peg actually lowers down three quarters of an inch, then the shifter, the, I'm sorry, not the shifter, the brake lever should have to lower down three quarters of an inch to maintain that relationship. I don't know if there's that, that much play in this linkage. I think it's behind here. I don't know if there's that much play in the linkage, but I have to take it apart to find out. It's the only thing I can think of doing. So let's, uh, again, I don't, I don't know that I know everything on how to do this. So let's start taking this apart. First, I'm going to remove the existing peg.
This is the washer I have to reuse. And then the pin has to be reused. Boy, I can see why Dork in the Road doesn't like doing this. So I would think the pin There's a pen. In the kit, they give you two bolts, hex head bolts. They screw into the, the foot peg, the inside of the foot peg, between the peg and the frame, and it acts as a stop to create the angle that the peg rests at. Some motorcycles have a flat angle for the peg, some have it slightly raised, only old ones I ever saw that were kind of drooped. I think they were worn out. But usually a peg is slightly raised or it's level or some type of angle. In Vinash's directions, he's telling me, tells us, in the KTM Husqvarna 890 901, two washers on each screw. So he gives you the washers. Man, he gives you a lot of washers. Two, four, six, eight, ten washers. So he's saying on... The screw that I screw in, that I need two washers to match the angle of the stock foot peg. And then of course I'm going to put Loctite, medium Loctite, on this. Hopefully you can see it. Medium Loctite, two washers, and I'm going to screw this in that you install. And I'm not going to show you the whole video, but I'm going to get them started and then I'm going to put a little Loctite on them. I don't lose any. And then screw it in like that. So let me do these with the camera off, not to bore you. And I'll get these screws in. And I lost the zip tie that was holding this assembly together, but oh, I think it should still work. Wow, it is so big, I love it. I love it. Okay, let's get a new cotter pen. Machinist. If you're out that many machinists out there, you can tell me what a bad job I'm doing on this. So I was changing a hot water tank with my father. I was probably about 16 years old, as strong as an ox. And we carried this hot water tank down. Look at how easy it is when you can see. Carry this hot water tank down into the basement of our house. And we're hooking things up on the hot water tank and my father just couldn't see. He, he couldn't see what he was doing. And I could see it as clear as day. He said to me, my God, you can see in the dark. Now, how time catches up to all of us, right? Okay. Oh, that peg is so nice. So you're going to have to bear with me here because this is the first time I've done this. So I've checked the free play on this. And it's roughly, in the, in the foot brake lever, it's roughly 5 millimeters. And so you adjust that free play here on this bolt. I'm sorry, you adjust the level on this stop right here and you adjust the free play on this piece in the back. Okay? So, first of all, we're going to reverse this, and I'm going to take these out. This lever was actually one inch below the front of this brake pedal, but I'm not going to set it that way. Because someone suggested setting it so they're level. 
So I'm going to adjust it so it's level. So that's how that's going to be set up. Now let me see. It's roughly 16th of, and I'm almost right where it was set originally. It was at, this is actually one inch lower. This paddle is one inch lower. It's sitting to the top of this screw, 16th and almost an eighth. The original was 17th and a quarter. So this is, this is over an inch lower. I thought they advertised that it would be three quarters of an inch, but on this seems to be almost an inch lower. Very level. So I'm almost at this height, right where this should be. Adjust the free play on this plunger rod. And I have to back off this bolt. And this is going to be trial and error. I'm going to screw this in. Wow, I think it's got to go. I might have, this might be a tough adjustment. Boy, Vanash is smart because I think, I think he made this pedal as low as he could in order to get the right amount of free play. So let's see where we're at. 92. And I am just at, you can see how far it goes down, but the free play is a little bit of play before you get to where you're, you're, you're activating the brake. And I am right at five millimeters, that's what I was. Vinash designed this pack, I think he, smart enough to, to design it as low as he could get it and still have the play, the throw on this free play with the stock parts because I'm maxed out. Let's give you a look, just the comparison of these pegs. How much bigger, how much bigger the Vanash peg is. It's just awesome. It's like I have a Harley Davidson floorboard. Now you can see that the shift lever is level with the angle of the peg, it's level with it. So that's, I'm going to use that as my guide to setting this up and the adjustment for the shift lever and it's in neutral is all right here. So pretty easy to get to. I shouldn't have to take anything off. Of course, I have to wrestle with, although I'm sitting on my garage floor, I have to wrestle with removing this cotter pen. So I didn't get this on film because the camera was off and it was operator error. So this rod, you can see when I turn this rod, it raises and lowers the shift lever. And I want it as far down as I can. And I'm at the maximum throw of this rod unless I pull this arm off and reset it. And I'm not gonna do that. I'm not. So I'm gonna leave it down all the way. I'm going to tighten these set screws at either end. And I'm going to see how it is like that. It's probably three, a quarter of an inch higher than what it was with the stock pegs. But I'm going to leave it like that. We'll see how it runs like that. I thought it was a little low to begin with. Let me sit on the bike and see. These pegs are so wide. I love it. They are so wide and comfortable and grippy. So I like the location for upshifting. I really like the location for upshifting. Downshifting, I'm not sure if I like it. I definitely like it for upshifting. I don't know, I have to check it on the Ducati to see how that is. Quick overview of the tools I use. Another thir a number 30 Torx driver. Take the cover plate off for the foot brake lever to get to the, the, the um, master cylinder and the push rod that goes in that. The four millimeter Allen wrench 
to adjust the bolt that sets the the angle of the foot peg. Remember with the washers, a couple pairs of needle nose pliers, 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter and an 11 millimeter wrench to do the brake adjustments and the, the, the shifter lever adjustments, screwdriver for the cotter pin, these are for the cotter pin, the climb pliers save the day with the cotter pin, punch press had to use that on the cotter pin, screwdriver on the cotter pin to spread it, and a hammer. Never use these to cut the zip ties. The zip ties that were supplied with the kit um, broke when I put them, the zip tie came loose when I shoved it into the mount onto the frame for the pegs so that wasn't an issue. Medium, Loctite, always use that. Not sure if I'm going to try to fiddle with this shifter. I did get it lowered. Uh, I would still like it a little lower. Look at the size difference. Is that massive or what? They are so comfortable. I'll give you a look at the other side, just the way I stepped on it. So this is what I showed you at the first look when I got on the bike. They are just so nice. Oh, they're huge. Now I know why Ian changes the foot pegs on bikes. They are just so big. Oh, they are nice. The angle is just right on them with two washers on those set screws. Very big, very comfortable. Brake, the brake is just at the right level. Depending on where I sit, if I sit back, the shifter is fine. But you can see that now it actually overhangs, look at it. It's right to the, it overhangs my boot. You can see it overhangs my boot where the other one was an inch shorter, the, the stock pegs. And they're just so nice. Just so big and grippy, I love them. Just outstanding. Oh gosh, they look great. Not only are they functional, they look so great. So good. Give you a look. Oh my gosh, standing is the best. Standing is the best. Marauders, that's it. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the video build up on the Husqvarna 901 Expedition. Great bike. Uh, look forward to seeing you on the trail. Thanks, guys. They, you really notice the size when you stand up. You notice it all. My God, it's like floorboards on a Harley. They're so nice. Great product, Vanash. Great product. Thank you for making it. Woohoo!